So when we first bought the house, there was a vented fireplace here. You can see we have natural gas and we also have an electrical outlet. And so we knew we wanted to redo this. Um, we pulled the old one out and now we're ready to revamp this little corner. So the first thing we're going to do is mount a mantle up here. We're going to use a live edge, piece of slab, and then we're going to do a brick veneer, um, which is basically like half inch thick brick. Uh, we're going to do that for the wall. So here is our mantle piece. Very pretty. Um, so I'm going to want this, I want this to be a floating shelf. And so, we have a bracket here. This is from Shepherd Bracket. We're going to mount this like so. And it slips into the back. Now, if, it, if you can see, I had to cut this one down so it wouldn't, you know, stick all the way out. Um, but yeah, let's get this mounted. Today we're going to be working on this corner behind the fireplace, and we want to make it um, a brick background. So I picked up these General Shale Providence Series Thin Bricks. I've also heard them called veneer, um, but essentially it's a brick cut to about a three eighth or a half inch uh, width, and these can be installed several different ways. Um, I've seen people use construction adhesive, some kind of tile adhesive, or mortar. With mortar you can buy a bag and mix it yourself, or buy a pre-mixed um, bucket. This is one gallon. Uh, for what I'm using it, it covers about 25 square feet. So, should be plenty for this area. Um, this way I'm not me uh, messing with a mixer, uh, getting you know mortar splashed everywhere. So that's my uh, way of doing this. This is a little more expensive. Um, you're paying a little bit more, but for sake of uh, keeping things clean and maybe a little more smooth line, it was worth it for me. First thing I'm going to do is get the laser level out, make sure that the first row of bricks is uh, level, and then I'll be able to build on top of that. I am using 3 8 spacers. Um, if I wanted a perfectly straight row of bricks, I would cut a piece of wood and have, you know, a 3 foot long strip of 3 8 or quarter inch, whatever my gap was between the bricks, and I would put that across all the bricks and that would keep everything perfectly straight, perfectly level. Um, because this house is 1903 and everything's a little bit off, whether it's you know the trim or cap is not closing all the way, we kind of wanted to go with that more traditional uh, style, so I'm not going to be as OCD about uh, having everything perfectly straight. For, uh, things are a little bit jagged, that's um, what I'm going for. So. Yeah, let's get started. You can see we're about a quarter of the way up. Um, we've done four layers of bricks. And since I'm not super, super quick, I don't do this every day, I wanted to take a little break. So what I've done is I've wiped all the excess above this that it does, so to make sure it doesn't dry. And now I can wash my hands and wash the tools. Um, I've been working on this for maybe a half hour and the mortar is starting to dry on the tools. So if you can wash it with warm water, it'll come right off when it's still setting up. Once it dries, it becomes a lot harder to scrape off. And so I'm not wearing gloves. Um, so to wash my hands, get all that mortar off every 20 or 30 minutes, super helpful. Uh, you can wear gloves. I just didn't have any ones that were thin enough to get a feel for what was going on. The ones I have are just like super thick and I didn't want to wear those. 
So anyway, taking a quick break, um, washed all the tools, washed my hands, got everything cleaned up, letting it dry, and then I'll get back to it. The other nice thing is as this mortar starts to set up, I can potentially use these spacers higher up if I need them. The other thing I wanted to point out is once I got some of these cuts, I made the first um, two or three cuts inside. It's kind of dusty, so you don't want to do all the cuts inside. Um, once I got those measurements, I went outside and I cut a bunch at once. The same goes with these ones and all these corner ones. And so now I have a bunch of those that are cut, they were done outside, let the dust be out there and not in here. Okay, so we have all the brick up, um, everything's spaced. You can see I ran out of spacers, so I cut um, some plywood, which happened to be the same uh, width, and those spacers worked out pretty good. Once I got towards the top, um, I had to reduce it a little bit to get these last two bricks in, but it came out really good. Um, this mortar takes between 24 and 72 hours to fully cure and dry, depending on humidity and the temperature. Here in Colorado, we have um, pretty low humidity. I'm gonna put a fan on this and it should dry pretty quick. Hoping to put the grout on in the morning, so um, less than 24 hours, but we'll see. If the brick can still move in the morning, obviously it's not feel fully cured. If it's really stiff and um, some of this mortar breaks off and it's hard, then we know it's good. So that's it for now, just need to let it dry. All right, so we let the brick set overnight. Um, it's solid, it's not moving, the mortar is really hard to break apart, it's solid inside, so we know we're good. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to use a grout bag to put the grout in. Um, you can do a trowel and kind of squeeze it in between the lines. I think the grout bag is going to be a little bit quicker, so let's give it a try. Alright, so there you have it. The wall behind the fireplace is complete. The grout bag worked pretty good. Um, it allowed me to set the grout pretty quickly. Uh, you can use a trowel and kind of squeeze it in or point it in, but I feel like that takes a little bit longer. So anyway, uh, we'll set the fan up on this and let it dry overnight. Since we're not walking on it or using it in any sort of way, um, we're all set. Alright, thanks for watching.